All right, so the plan is to finish reading these just little sections. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections we're going to finish reading. And then there is an assignment. So I actually have to scroll back up to. And I told you yesterday, in case you remember, that we already talked about um, some of this before uh, Christmas break. We talked about a lot of it. But, you know, never hurts to review. So this section is uh, about... John White, would someone like to read this lovely section for me? Isaiah, please read this section for me. John White drew his, did this during his year at Ono Bayou. Recent vision in Bernie County, North Carolina, has produced a new idea about what might have happened to the lost colony. Continue, Isaiah. Sorry, sorry. The diggers located several artifacts from the period. They included nails and pieces of pottery and bones. The dig is near the site of a fort marked on a map that John White drew in 1585 to 52. When White, when White returned from England, he didn't look for their lost colony. Did they go there? Maybe. 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 All right, so once again, still about some Roanoke, you know, the lost colony, where they go, what they do, we don't know. And um, this was just a drawing that he drew, okay? So um, they did find some, I think um, it is cool that they found some artifacts from, like, you know, the 1500s, they were able to do that. So we're not going to highlight anything in that section. We're just going to continue on to the next. Thank you for reading, Isaiah. The next one is on the map over here. Uh, Gabby, can you please read this nice and loud for us? Even though two attempts to colonize Virginia had failed, English merchants still wanted that, what the land had to offer. With the permission of King James I, they set up the Virginia Company. Each merchant bought stock, a share of the ownership of the company. Each would share in any profit in the profit. In 1607, the Virginia Company sent 105 men to Virginia. They sailed with the Chesapeake Bay, or in Douglas River, they made the honor of the king. On the banks of the river, they established the Jamestown. So, um, this is basically was all about yourself. Thank you. Okay, about um, Roanoke yesterday. Remember, the two colonies had failed, but they were like, oh no, people still want to go there. So remember, they sold this stock to men and they were like, oh my gosh, there's going to be gold there. It's going to be great. There's going to be gold. You're going to go. 105 men went and was Jamestown very successful in the beginning. No, it was like the opposite. Remember, it was like swampy land. No one wanted to work. They just looked for gold. It was not going very good. Um, so I just think, you know, it was not very good to begin with. Can someone remind me how it turned out to be okay eventually because of what? Mason? Oh, uh, from like having a peace, like somewhat peace with the Indians. That was helpful, but that's not how they became. Oh, yeah, because uh, Captain John Smith became the Captain Alex. Well, yeah, he also helped because he told people, if you don't work, you don't eat. But how did they finally, how were they finally able to make some money and become successful? Zoe? By growing the tobacco. That is how Jamestown was eventually able to survive. So um, I would like you to just highlight. Sixteen oh seven. The Virginia Company sent one hundred five men to Virginia. And then I just want you to write Jamestown, and then Jamestown Colony. And I also want you to um, highlight what stock is. Stock, comma, a share of the ownership of each of the company. That's just interesting. You can still like, you can own stock and stuff. 
that's like a real life thing. Okay, so you are highlighting stock, a share of ownership of the company. You are also highlighting 1607, the Virginia company sent 105 men to Virginia. And then last but not least, please just highlight the word Jamestown. Because that's what they created once they went, once those 105 men went to Jamestown, which was not very fun in the beginning because of where they landed, because no one was working, no one knew how to take care of themselves necessarily. It was not going very swimmingly. But eventually they were able to get some help from the captain and grow tobacco, and it became more successful at least. All right, we already read the Jamestown one, so let's jump down to here. Mrs. Kneifel is probably going to mess up the names. I apologize. The American Indians living near Jamestown belonged to the Confederacy of 30 groups headed by a powerful leader named Powhatan. Powhatan. Remember, this is all in our video yesterday. Therefore, the colonists referred to the local Indians as Powhatan. Relationships between the colonists and the Powhatan were often tense. That means like... Uh, they're not perfect, right? Like there's always some little bits of issues, things like that. One day when John Smith was exploring, he was captured by some Powhatan. According to the legend, he was about to be killed when Pocahontas, the daughter of Powhatan, pleaded that he be spared. After that, there was a short time of peace between the colonists and the Powhatan. And if you remember Pocahontas, she was like the main reason that the colonists and the Native Americans were able to get along. She learned English and she saved that nice guy. So let's just highlight. Um, let's just highlight the word Pocahontas. That way we just know where there's a little bit about her. She was definitely helpful in people getting along without her there wouldn't have even been as much like peace as there was not that it was necessarily peace but and next we're all the way down to 1609 remember the lost colony of roanoke was during like the 1585 area and now we're all the way down to 1609 and Jamestown was first established in 1607. So two years later, this is when we start to get in a little bit of profit. By 1609, the merchants who invested in Jamestown Company had not made any profit. Remember, they're having a terrible time, okay? They found no gold. They don't like where they live. Terrible time. Then John Ra Raffle, Raffle, Ralphie, whatever his last name is, arrived bringing tobacco plants that he bought in the West Indies. Tobacco had become popular in Europe, but the set, the Jamestown settlers did not like the type growing by the Powhatan. They thought Rolfe's, or however we say his name, tobacco was superior. They planted it and eventually sold it all over Europe. It became the first cash crop of the colony. A cash crop is one that is grown to be sold rather than used by farmer. While Jamestown, Raphael fell in love, with and married Pocahontas. So that's nice. So I want you to highlight this big section here. I want you to highlight first the word tobacco. And then I want you to highlight planted and eventually sold all of Europe. And then I want you to highlight exactly what a cash crop is. A cash crop is one that is grown to be sold rather than to be used by the farmer. <laughs> so that is important to remember. They did not just grow this for fun, to be used for them. They grew it specifically to sell. And that is eventually how they were able to become successful. And then feel free to um, highlight this last little bit about how um, the Raphael guy fell in love and married Pocahontas. How nice. Yeah, but she fell in love with well, they actually said fell in love. They didn't say he just decided. So let's assume. Yeah, that's not like real life, friends. That's a that's a Disney movie. But. All right, we are now in the middle section. 
To meet the needs of worker, Jamestown settlers began bringing in indentured servants from England. Remember, the indentured servants were under contract to work for up to seven years. So remember, they weren't necessarily slaves, but they couldn't break their contract or they'd probably be killed or something. So they were kind of like slaves, but not really. So they had a different name. So I want you to highlight what indentured servants is. That's one of our vocab word. After that, they were free to work for themselves. So for at least seven years, they had to work for someone under their contract. In 1619, the first Africans arrived in the colony. They had been captured in the Caribbean from the Portuguese slave trading ships. It is not known whether they were treated as indentured servants or slaves. Ultimately, the indentured servant population could not meet the demand of labor in the tobacco field and slavery became common. So the first group of African-Americans were not 100% sure if they were automatically slaves or if they were the indentured servants where they were going to let go in seven years and then be free. But um, the demand got so big that they just, you know, Isabel, do you need something? Hold on one second, friends at home. All right. Anyway, so they're not 100% sure, but regardless, slavery became common. So I do want you to highlight 1619, the first Africans arrived in the colony. And then I also want you to highlight at the ver the last sentence that ultimately the indentured servant population could not meet the demand of labor. And then that's when slavery, they just decided, you know, oh, well, I own you now. You can help me because they were not able to keep up with the demand. So big timeline though, because remember the first, the county of Rowan County were the county, the what's it called? Colony, not county. I don't know why I keep on saying county, but the colony of Roanoke was in 18 or 1585. Uh, then people set sail for Virginia in 1607. Uh, then in 1609, people were still not successful until the tobacco came. And uh, then by 1619, so that's like 40 years after the lost Roanoke is when they decided that slavery had to become a thing because they just weren't able to keep up. And we have one more section on this page, and it says, In 1619, the Jamestown settlers established the House of Burgesses to make laws and set taxes in the Virginia colony. In England, a Burgess was someone who represented or acted on behalf of the town. The House of Burgesses was the first legislator or lawmaking body in America. England's American colonies. It was the first example of a representative government in the colonies. However, only men who owned property could vote and hold office. So there were lots of other people in the colony, women, and there were the indentured servants and slaves, all these other people, but only people who specifically owned land, not just worked for, but owned the land, and um, where men could actually be a part of it necessarily. I feel like the majority of this paragraph is super important. So I just want you to underneath it, write laws and taxes. Cause I feel like the majority of this is an extremely important paragraph. Cause it talks about the house of Burgesses, how it was made. And then the people who were within this house of Burgesses, remember it's not a real house. It's just what it's called. The group of people made the taxes and set the laws. So they decided what was what and the law uh, taxes are how much money people had to pay. And um, since it was the first one, obviously this is the first type of government 
that was part of American colony. So I think this entire paragraph is important. So please just write laws and taxes underneath. Love a little learn more story. So you can put your uh, highlighter down for a minute and I'm just going to read you. This isn't in your magazine. It's in mine. So, uh, or it's on the online version. So I'm just going to read it to you just for fun. A little bit of learn more. It says, well, here's a picture. This looks like a dead person. This looks like a hiding woman. He looks like he's shooting someone. There's a bow and arrow. Who probably has a bow and arrow? Native Americans. Yep. By 1619, there are more than a thousand colonists in Jamestown. Remember, Jamestown started with 105 men, and now there's over a thousand um, 12 years later. They had spread out over the Powhatan territory looking for fertile land on which to plant their new cash crop, tobacco. Now, fertile land is going to be land good for planting. The Powhatan resented the invasion of their lands. In 1622, after the death of Powhatan, the Powhatan attacked and killed more than 340 colonists. So that's about mm, 30% of the people of the colonists that were killed. A series of wars broke out between the colonists and the Powhatan. The Powhatan Wars and the debts of the Virginia Company led King James to take over, over Virginia from the company. He made it a royal colony, meaning that the king owned the colony. He appointed a governor, an official to help run the colony. The governor shared power with the House of Burgesses. So because of all these wars and all these people that were getting killed, they weren't able to keep up with their tobacco and making money to, you know, support themselves. So the king back in England just had to take over. And he said, okay. It's mine now. I own it. And it's no longer ran by the people. Instead, he he appointed his own governor. The governor wasn't voted in. So it's safe to say that probably not everyone liked having a governor. But it does say that he shared the power with the House of Burgesses, which means some people from the colony originally were able to still be a part of it. But once again, Jamestown on the struggle bus. Which is probably fair because why would the Native Americans want them taking more and more and more of their lands, right? We have another little section right here. One of the laws passed by the House of Burgesses said that everyone must attend church on Sunday. Unlike the United States today, there was no separation of church and state. Separation of church and state means like... You can choose your own religion, the government, like our governor has nothing, can't say what we have to, what religion we have to go to, whether we have to go to church or anything like that. So we have a separation between church and government. But back in the day, they didn't have that. It was like a law. You had to go to church on Sunday. It was really important. The Virginia colony had an established church, meaning a church that is recognized as the official church. It was a Church of England or Anglican Church. In his writing, John Smith described the place of worship in Jamestown as a simple structure. The settlers stretched a sail among the boughs of trees and rails to construct the sides of the building. They sat on benches made from tree trunks. The altar was simply a log nailed with two neighboring trees. So this church that they went to, their established church, was not like some fancy building or anything. It is kind of what they may do with, but it was still where everyone had to go on Sunday. And then here's a little bit more about King James I. King James I wanted the colonists to know that they were still English. In the Virginia's company charter, he said that settlers in Virginia would have all the liberties as they had been born with England. In other words, they would have the same rights and freedom as English citizens. So even though they left England, he's saying you're still part of us. Yes. I don't know. I don't have my true false paper. It probably is. Ugh. Ah. Dang. Well then, it's okay. I got some tape. Number six on our true false paper. Oh, yeah. King James I promised to give Virginia colonists and American Indians the same freedoms as England people. I didn't say anything about Native Americans, did it? No. So what would we say that is? False. False, because I would just say. Okay, I don't know why I just muted myself. Sorry. 
I would say six is false. And this, you can just put online version or put online because this is not in your magazine um, because he did not promise the same freedoms and rights to American Indians. He only promised it, promised, promised it to the um, colonists. So I would say that's false. And you can just put online because there's no specific page. And then once you are done with that little chunk, you may move on to the next page. What page is what on? I literally said it twice already, Rush. Why don't you ask a neighbor? No, that's not what I said. Where did we find number six, everyone? Online. It was not on a page number, remember? It was on the online version only. So you're supposed to write online. The last little chunk we are going to read today is just more about how po Pocahontas saved John Smith. Okay, without Pocahontas, John Smith would have died. So thank you, Pocahontas. So this is just a little more background knowledge. Pocahontas saves John Smith. In 1607, John Smith was captured by the Powhatan. Many years later, he wrote that Pocahontas had saved his life. He said that when he was about to be clubbed to death, which means just like hit with something till he died, which doesn't sound like very fun. When Pocahontas, Pocahontas pleaded with her father to spare him and threw herself across his body. Some historians question whether this ever happened. Others think that Smith may have been mistaken and that he was not in danger of death. They think that having his head placed on stone might have been part of an adoption ceremony so remember the native americans um spoke a different language obviously they spoke their own language so it was really hard for them to communicate so some people think that maybe john smith was just confused maybe he was laying down with his head on a stone as an adoption ceremony some type of ceremony through the native american tribe and maybe he wasn't really gonna die but maybe john smith thought he was gonna die so we're not totally for sure why are we not totally for sure? Because this happened in 1607 and obviously no one's alive. So we only have what his writings were and how he interpreted it. We don't have Pocahontas' side of the story or the Powhatan side of the story. So we can only infer so much. Are there any questions over what we have read today? Dun, 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 dun. When we come back on Monday, we're going to start learning about the pilgrims and the first 13 colonies. I really like what we're learning about right now. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I need you guys to keep put your magazine to the side. I don't think you need it technically, but you just put it to the side just in case you do need it. And I need you looking at my screen. On your screen, or on my screen, air, there is an assignment, okay? This is Friday, 1-7-22, Jamestown Brain Pop Quiz. So today, on your own, okay, you are going to re-watch the Brain Pops on Jamestown and take the quiz on the attached Google form, not the one on Brain Pop, the one right here for you, Okay. You may watch the Brain Pop video as many times as you would like, but you can only complete the quiz once. So once you complete the quiz, you're out of luck. Um, take your time and do your personal best. There's the login, WB Schools, and Hawks. And then it should just say keep using shared account. Some That might show up. It might not. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And you are going to do that. But you have to rewatch the videos because we only watch the videos once. Okay? What questions do we currently have? This is a quiz. You need to do your personal best, okay? There's no time limit currently. We're just gonna do our personal best. And if you happen to finish, eyeballs on me. That way I don't have 56 questions. When you finish, you, if you are one of my like five or six people that never finished their Google form, you need to work on that. If you did finish your Google form, you are free to AR read, okay? Any questions, complaints, concerns? All right, then you are free to go. 
Eric, you are one of my people that needs to finish their Google form. Please do that after you finish this quiz. Um, make sure you watch the video as many times as you need. I will see. Bye, Miss Kinefo. Bye. Bye, guys. So, oh.